Hello friends, this video on P-Block Elements part 38 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's take some numerical now. Conditions to maximize the yield of sulfuric acid by contact process. We just saw its contact process again is a three step process. Sulfur is burned to form sulfur dioxide. Easy one, sulfur dioxide to form sulfur trioxide. Difficult one is the key step. In the sulfur trioxide uh, will react with uh, to form oleum and this oleum will dilute in water you get sulfuric acid so the second step is the most critical step so for this we, uh, we will apply all the possible scenarios this is a exothermic process exothermic Delta H is minus 196.6 kJ per mole. So what we do is we try to keep temperature low. But too low temperature, the reaction won't even happen. So we take keep the temperature of 450 Kelvin. Also we see there is a decrease in the volume. 1, 2 moles to 1 mole. So we try to increase pressure. But too high pressure, the sulfur dioxide will corrode the whole uh, machine. So we take... Uh, take the temperature of or pressure of 2 atmospheric only then with this low temperature and uh, with not such high temperature and not uh, such uh, I mean with the high temperature and not such low sorry with 450 Kelvin and 2 atmospheric pressure in, in fact we compromise both in temperature and pressure because of certain regions so we use catalyst catalyst V205 so we use catalyst to increase the rate of reaction okay justify the placement of oxygen sulfur selenium selenium polonium in the same group they're in the same group why see if you see the electronic configuration electronic configuration is ns2 and v4 for all these so with that it is justifiable you talk about the oxidation states oxidation state uh, we have discussed a lot on this so oxygen state, oxygen has at the max plus 2, but these guys has plus 6 at the max, plus 6, plus 6, and this has plus 4 because of inert pair effect. So for oxidation state also, they have similar pattern. Also, hydride formation, if you see, all these form H2E type of hydrides. And they are all volatile hydrides. H2O, H2S, H2SE, H2TE, H2PO. So with these, we see that they have similar properties and thus, it is justified to keep them in the same group. Let's see uh, some similarity between oxygen and sulfur. Now. The first similarity is both are part of the same group, right? Same group. And that is my group 16. They have same electronic configuration NS2 and P4. Electronic configuration is same for oxygen and sulfur both are my non metal oxygen sulfur okay then now both are both form divalent ions O2 minus H2 minus both form that both form hydrides H H2O, H2S, right? And in both these hydrides, they have minus 2 oxidation state. Similarity between oxygen and sulfur. Let's see some of the difference between oxygen and sulfur. So, if we talk about the atomic number, this 8, it is 16. That is different. Atomic mass is also different. This is 16, this is 32. Atomic size is also different. Almost 60% more. Sulfur is 60% bigger than oxygen. Density also is different and the molecularity is in all these are different in all these cases oxygen has smaller value than sulfur The next one or oxygen is diatomic and sulfur is octatomic. This is S8 O2. You see oxygen sulfur typically exists as this kind of ring That is not the case. Let me draw this. Sulfur, so 
helpers and four five six seven eight this is the structure or sometimes even as a six the chair form but oxygen is almost always diatomic then oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur that is also we have seen for oxygen the electronegativity is 3.5 sulfur is almost 2.4 okay oxygen they don't have any d orbital no d orbital but sulfur has d orbital and thus oxygen covalency is maximum two but for sulfur covalency is six for example of6 is not possible sf6 is possible okay let's take some more numerical why dioxygen is a gas but sulfur is a solid again same thing sulfur exists as s8 dioxygen exists as o2 right so this s8 they have strong van der waal force of attraction this have only and thus if you see s sulfur has high melting point and boiling point and thus it is a solid because the structure sulfur structure we just do actually Right, this is complex structure. The van der Waal force of attraction is pretty high, and thus the melting point, boiling point is high, and it is solid. Knowing the electron gain enthalpy or from oxygen to O minus and oxygen to O two minus, these values are given uh, in kilojoule per moles respectively. How will you account for the formation of large number of oxides having O two minus and not O minus? See, looking at the is reaction O two O minus delta H is minus one forty one kilojoule per mole, and oxygen to O two minus delta H is positive. Just by looking at this, what we think we can say that this first reaction is more favorable, and thus you should have more oxides of where oxygen is in minus one state. But that is not the true. More oxide, if you see, is where oxygen is in the see plus uh, plus 2 uh, plus 2 plus 2 states sorry minus 2 state but also if you see then minus 2 states okay the question is why when this first reaction delta h is negative when it is uh, exothermic reaction why this is happening See again, not delta H is not the only factor to form a compound. There is something called lattice energy that also should be counted. See, the more the lattice energy, more is the stability. Okay. Now, for a metal to react with this O two minus, there is a high lattice energy. It gives a huge lattice energy, but for metal, it reacts with O minus one. There is a very low lattice energy. So, if you talk about the whole thing, let low lattice energy plus even if I am getting here uh, very huge of energy, one forty one. Let's suppose kilojoule energy, I'm getting it. So, I'm just in uh, class, and in this case, I, I have to give. Almost one zero two, sorry seven zero two kilojoule of energy. But even this this energy is required, but this energy is compensated by high lattice energy. This is very very high. So the total value is very high, and thus this reaction is favorable. Correct. Let's take some values actually. Let's suppose this lattice energy is two uh, thousand. And let's suppose this lattice energy is uh, 100. So if you now add the for the first equation, total energy liberated is 2000 plus minus 702. That's almost 1300. And for this, 
100 plus 141, almost 241. Which one is more? This. Because this lattice energy is very, very high. The amount of energy released when this metal forms oxide with oxygen minus 2 state is very, very high. And this lattice energy compensates for everything. Which aerosol depletes ozone? We have seen this freons are the one which depletes ozone. How is SO2 an air pollutant? SO2 is actually uh, is a pol uh, air pollutant. It can create respiratory problem. Respiratory, respiratory problem. We will not be able to breathe problem, uh, properly. It can damage uh, your plant. It can damage plant and trees. Okay. It can increase the corrosion rate. It will increase corrosion rate. And uh, actually, this sulfur dioxide it takes water from the atmosphere. It actually becomes corrosive. It will erode metals. It will fade the paints. It will change the pH of the whole river. It is a danger to the aquatic life. It is very, very dangerous. Right? In, uh, yeah. So in air, SO2 sometimes forms SO3. And this SO3 actually reacts with water in the sea or moisture to form sulfuric acid. And this is very, very dangerous. Even SO2 directly reacts with uh, water in the moisture to form sulfuric acid. Even this is dangerous. Correct. So it has respiratory problems, it damages trees and plants, increases the pH of the plant, uh, rivers, fades the paint. That's okay, but it's very harmful to aquatic life. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.